Hello, my beautiful planty people. I'm about to say something that's going to make you shake in your boots. Thrips. Oh, man. You know, that's probably one of the pests that I get asked about the most. Uh, they can be an absolute nightmare. Like waking up in the middle of the night, cold sweats, just a bad situation. So I asked you guys what some of the pests that you seem to have the most issues with, what you struggle with getting rid of the most. And last week we covered fungus gnats. Now they are a pest, but they're not damaging. Thrips can annihilate your collection quickly. And so I think that's... Um, probably the one pest that people have the most difficult time getting rid of um, and dealing with. So today we are going to discuss all things thrips. Now I did a video just over a year ago I think about thrips. Um, now I think I did it like while I was repotting or something like that but this video is dedicated. It's non rambly with the exception of right now. Um, we are going to get into the meat and taters of the thrip situation. I'm going to tell you what they are, how they work, um, <clears throat> what to look for. We're going to talk about uh, getting rid of them and then we're going to talk about prevention. So once we get rid of them, how do we keep them from coming back? So uh, for those of you who are new here, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Nikki. This is my channel, Plants, Pots and Whatnots. And for all of my GFPs, my gluttons for punishment, who keep coming back for more, thank you so much. It is amazing to see you. So, without further ado, let's get down to the task at hand. Let's talk about killing some thrips. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna run you through all of the things thrips. So uh, here at the side, I will try to list the timestamp of all of uh, the different spots. So if you need to jump around, if you don't wanna know about them or whatever, and you just wanna skip to how to treat them, you can do that. Although I would appreciate you watching the whole video because it really helps me out. First things first, what the heck is a thrips? Um, so the first thing I'm going to mention is that thrips is one of those words that really we have a hard time wrapping our brain around because you would think that thrips being S at the end would be plural, but the actual name of these pests are thrips. So even if there's just one, it is a thrips. It's really difficult. Now, sometimes you're going to hear people say thrip. I probably will at some point through this video, but just know that if you want to be like all, you know, accurate and stuff, um, they are referred to as a thrips, as in just one. Just an FYI, not really relevant at all. Okay, I have my notes here so I don't forget anything. So if I glance down, you'll know why. So first of all, what is a thrip? <laughs> See, I just did it. What is a thrips? So a thrips is a little tiny, narrow, skinny looking bug that kind of looks like metal shavings on first glance. And they have these specially designed little scratchy mouth parts that are designed to like scratch the tissue on your plant so that they're able to suck all of the life juice out of your plant, causing all kinds of damage, which I will show you later. So thrips have these long skinny bodies with these little antenna and kind of like a pointy tail. Uh, they also have these feathery like wings um, on their bodies, obviously, um, but they are very, very difficult to see, uh, especially with the naked eye. You'll probably never see one unless you have a pretty decent um, magnifying glass or microscope. So adult thrips are usually like brown or black. The ones that I personally have had in my collection are quite dark, um, almost a black coloring with almost like a little band of, of lighter brown around the like the abdomen area. 
So adult thrips can fly. This is what makes them as horrifying as they are. Now, the good part about this is that they can fly, but they're not very good at it. So they tend to not do so. Um, you're probably more likely going to see them um, like jump or scatter. Um, if you kind of go to touch one or get your finger close, sometimes they will just like go pew. Um, so if they do fly, it's not for a great distance because they kind of suck at it. So that is a little bit of a bonus if that sets your mind at ease at all. So baby thrips are called nymphs and they are extremely difficult to see. They're like a, a white or a cream color, almost opaque. Um, they will be extremely difficult to see. That is one of the parts of having thrips that's probably the most difficult because those are incredibly hard to see. A little black spot on your leaf is a lot easier to see than this little cream colored opaque bug that's teeny tiny. Invest in a microscope, not a microscope. Don't invest in one of those, that's crazy. Invest in a magnifying glass, huge. So the, the nymphs or the baby thrips kind of resemble the adults, but they're just a different color and they're slightly smaller. Thrips eggs, on the other hand, will be impossible to see unless you have some serious magnification. Uh, it's very like unlikely that you'll see them with the naked eye. Uh, they're just too small. That makes it really difficult to figure out if you have eggs. But if you're seeing thrips, you've got eggs. So let's talk about the life cycle because with any pest that you're going to be dealing with, whether it's, you know, the spiders, thrips, fungus gnats, spider mites, mice, you know, whatever you're dealing with, it's important to know the life cycle um, in, in order for us to be able to attack each life cycle. Um, if you're only treating, you know, for one particular one, then, you know, you may still have, if you're only treating for the adults, for example, you know, you're not doing anything about all of the new babies that are up and coming. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's important to know the life cycle so that you can treat all aspects of their life cycle. So as I said before, there's basically three stages. So you have the eggs, you have the nymphs, and then you have the adults. The problem is in the right conditions, they can multiply insanely quickly with the adults laying up to 80 eggs at a time. So at any given point, you can have multiple generations of like 80 eggs each. It gets a little gross. So the egg to adult cycle lasts about two weeks from egg to pu uh, egg to nymph to adult. So it's important that when you're treating and we'll get, I'll probably repeat this over and over throughout this video, but it's important to be diligent, to keep on top of it. Um, don't treat once and think, woohoo, we did it. You didn't, <laughs> I promise you, <laughs> they're still there. So adult thrips only live for about a month, if that's any consolation to you at all. I know that a lot of pests don't live quite that long, like when you compare it to a fungus gnat who only lives about a week, a month is quite a long time. So when you think about it, a pest can cause a lot of damage in a month. That's four weeks. That's approximately 31 days. That's a lot of plant juice they can suck. So we wanna do as much as we can to get rid of them. Even worse than that, they can reproduce as asexually, which means they don't need a partner in order to be able to lay eggs. Oh. So where did they come from? How did I even get them? Why are they in my house? What did I do wrong? Don't beat yourself up over it. <laughs> One of the things I always say is that if you are going to keep house plants, you are going to have pests at some point. Um, so just kind of be realistic about what your goals in, in regards to pests are because the more plants you have, the less time you have to care for each individual plant. Now for me to go ahead and treat, I have approximately, I don't know, anywhere between 250 to 300 plants. And in the beginning when my plant collection started getting a little bit crazy, I would just like go insane if I had a pest at all. And 
I would be treating things and I would be like stressing out because, oh my gosh, my collection can't have pests. And even if it was like one that I saw and I couldn't find anything else, it was, I just got so stressed out about it because in my mind, they just shouldn't be here. I'm doing something wrong. You're not doing something wrong. It just happens. So anyway, tangent, Nikki, sorry. Um, so where do they come from? So they can come in on um, leaves of plants that, or in the soil of a plant that you've brought home from a nursery or from your friend or wherever. So that's why it's important to really check the plants that you're bringing home, regardless of where you get them from. And I always say, as soon as I get any plant home, I'm changing the soil and I can hear some people, I know, I know, but that's what I do and I've never had a problem, but to each his own. But that's what I do. I want to get rid of the soil so that I know that there's no eggs in the soil. It's got nice, clean, fresh soil that's pestless. Um, I treat the plant so I spray it down with um, my insecticidal soap spray. And that way I just feel better about knowing that that new plant that I'm adding to my collection came into my house clean. Do you know what I'm saying? So the other thing that a lot of people don't think about is the fact that you can bring them in in other ways. They can come in on your clothing. Um, not so much right now, especially for me here because everything's snowy and I'm pretty sure there's none out there right now. Uh, that and I don't ever leave the house. Um, but the other thing is in the spring and summertime, let's say you bring in some cut flowers from your garden or let's say you have a vegetable or garden or you grow fruit on trees or whatever. When you bring cut flowers or anything from outside inside, the potential is that they could have a thrips on them. Now keep in mind, even one thrips on an apple that you picked off that tree and brought inside does not need another one to reproduce. So you bring one thrips inside your house, it can turn into many, many, many more in quite a short amount of time. So anything you bring inside, give it a good shake. If you can spray it off outside, do that first, then bring it in. Just be mindful that that's a thing, okay? Um, also, when you're bringing your plants in in the fall, um, if you're a person that puts your host plants outside, make sure that you're completely treating them before they even cross the threshold of your door. Um, now, outside tends to be a little bit better than you would find in your home because there are natural predators of thrips outside, but it is entirely likely that you're going to run into uh, issues when you're bringing plants in if you don't treat them first. Okay, you get it. You get it. Let's move on. So, what do thrips eat? Thrips are not particular when it comes to what plant they choose to munch down on. So be prepared to find them on pretty much any plant that you have in your collection. Um, I've seen them on almost everything. Now there are plants, some of my plants, that just seem to never get thrips. But I think honestly that's a fluke. They're really not particular. If they can suck the sap out of a plant, they're going to do it. So. It's not just one particular part of the plant either. It could be the leaves, the petioles, the stems, uh, the buds, the blooms. Anything above the soil basically is free game for the thrips to munch on. So both adults and the nymphs or the babies feed on uh, the sap of the plant. They usually start on the underside. Um, so if you're not checking the underside of your leaves, you probably won't notice them until the population gets larger enough that the adults are crawling on onto the tops of the leaves. So if you start seeing them on stems and tops of leaves, etc., then you probably have a pretty healthy population <laughs> of thrips. So what does thrips damage look like? How do you know if you have thrips? I mean, there's so many different things that can happen to our plants that, you know, a yellow leaf or a spot here, a spot there. Um, there are a lot of things that mimic each other. It's, it's a little bit more difficult to say, oh, that particular damage is caused by this. It can kind of manifest in a few different ways. So the first things you're gonna notice are probably tiny little spots that look like the green has been taken out or like um, almost like lines, like 
um, small scrape marks that could potentially be a little silvery or brownish looking. Um, I'll be inserting footage here of multiple different <laughs> ways that thrips damage can manifest, um, but that's definitely something that you want to look for is any kind of damage, spots, um, leaves eventually will start to fade and look a little bit dirty but it usually starts by turning whitish or grayish in color and then eventually browning as that part of the plant dies because basically just all of the the nutrients in that part of the leaf has been sucked out of it though it is possible for thrips to kill a house plant it's not likely if you have a, a decent sized health otherwise healthy plant uh, you would have to have an infestation that was wildly out of control in order for it to take down an entire plant. Now the plants that do become a little bit more susceptible are like seedlings, um, smaller plants, plants that were already struggling say with root rot or, or something like that. They're much more sensitive to a thrips infestation as a larger plant would be. Now that's not to say that it's not going to cause damage to your plant, but it's not going to kill your plant if that gives you any solace at all. So thrips infestations not only make your house plants look terrible, but it can also stunt their growth and cause like misshapen leaves. So if you start to see leaves come out that are kind of like weird, uh, like discolored um, or like crooked or something like that, that is a good indication that you may have a thrips problem. So if any of your plants are showing these signs, spot discoloration, uh, silvery or brown stripes on the leaves, um, if you have misshapen buds, blooms, uh, leaves coming out, that's a time where you should really take notice of your plant, take it away from the others, really get an up close and personal look at all of the leaves, flip the leaves, check the tops and bottoms. I highly recommend using a magnifying glass and a flashlight or even the flashlight on your phone uh, because a lot of these things like I said the nymphs are so difficult to see that you really need to get up there and look we don't want to treat a plant if it doesn't need to be treated so if if you see things like that you want to try to find out if that's exactly what it is before we go you know putting chemicals and things like that on your plant but definitely if you see any of those signs there's an indication of some sort of problem so this is what you came for <laughs> we're now going to get into how do you get rid of these little nightmares glad you asked roll up your sleeves folks it's time okay so although at times it if you've ever had a thrips outbreak it seems like an impossible chore. You know, I've had so many messages, people just saying like, why do they exist? They're the worst, I can't get rid of them, I've done everything. Um, and I know that it sometimes feels that way and I think, and I, I've dealt with the same, same situation. I am very well aware of how to get rid of them all and not have them come back. Um, but in the collection that I have, it's just, I mean, I would spend, you know, every other day just treating plants. So it does become more difficult when you have a larger collection, but it can be done. It's all about how much time you're willing to invest in treating them and how badly do you really wanna eradicate the entire population. Here's a fun fact for you. Thrips can build up an immunity to chemical treatments. So, in this video, I'm going to be leaning towards more organic and natural treatments uh, because over time, if you're putting chemicals on thrips, they will build up the immunity to the chemical and it will no longer become effective. Good times. Thanks, thrips. So we're going to go through all of the different options right now with whatever measure that you choose to treat the thrips infestation you just need to be diligent uh, if you want to completely eradicate them so keep that in mind it's something that is going to take some time but it is possible there is hope so the first thing you're going to want to do if you suspect that a plant has thrips take it away immediately grab it off your shelf or wherever you have that take it away from everything else now here's a little helpful tip for you 
Um, when you're moving that plant to somewhere else, keep it away from other things plants, uh, keep it away from your soil, any amendments that you use or anything else that you would use on your plants. Pots, um, bags of soil, um, all of those types of things. Anything that you would use on your plants later on down the line um, because if they tend to jump off or something like that while you're moving the plant from one corner to the other or one side of the room to the other, you know, you could just exacerbate the problem. So just be mindful of wh where you're moving it to and what you're moving it past or touching as you go. <laughs> so then you wanna check all the surrounding plants. Um, once you've moved that plant out of the way, check all the plants around it very thoroughly. Get your magnifying glass, get your flashlight, flip your leaves, check your petioles, so on and so forth, just to make sure that there are no plants around it that potentially could have gotten them as well. If you find one, go ahead and take that and move it over with the other infected plant. You're gonna wanna make sure that you treat it right away. Don't wait. <laughs> Just take it and deal with it immediately. Also, when you're handling a plant with any kind of pest, whether it's thrips, spider mites, mealybugs, you're gonna wanna make sure that you keep, I would wear something without long sleeves or roll your sleeves up and wash your hands and arms because it's very easy for them to drop down onto your hands or arms. And if you're not washing that off and then you go to touch another plant in your collection, you're just, do you see, it's, just, it's it's not a good situation. So it's best just to have like, you know, your sleeves up or whatever and just try to keep them away from your body so that you don't reinfect other plants. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do um, or that I typically do is uh, physical removal. So any that you see, you have a few options of how to get those off just so you know, they're immediately gone. Uh, you can squish them with your fingers. That's really super satisfying. I do that just like, boom. Um, and they're dead, so that gives you a feeling of like superiority and power. The other thing that you can do that actually I saw uh, Daryl from House Plan Journal do is, and I thought this was a brilliant idea. Um, so get yourself a lint roller, because I'm sure a lot of us have those, the ones that are sticky, not like the ones with the fabric, but the sticky ones. Um, support the leaf, and you have to do this gently and just roll the lint roller over the leaf and it will pick up the thrips, it will pick up uh, eggs, it will pick up nymphs. Uh, so that's really cool. I thought that was such a good idea. I actually went on Amazon yesterday because um, we couldn't find any in Walmart, which I thought was weird. And I ordered like five of them. <laughs> so that is gonna be something that I try um, here soon. I thought that was an amazing idea. So there's a little helpful tip for you. Thank you, Daryl. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is rinse down your plant. That will, um, if you're not wanting to physically touch them or anything like that, um, you can take them outside is the preferable place to do that. Uh, take them outside, give them a spray down with the hose or whatever. Um, just be mindful of more delicate plants with delicate leaves. You're not you know, power washing them. You're just giving them nice sharp spray to get, uh, to knock anything off. That works really well. You can also, um, like here, I couldn't do that right now, it's cold. Uh, so you can take them to your bathtub if you have like a sprayer on your shower or alternatively, just take them to your sink. Just give the leaves a spray down. I have one of those little hoses on my sink and that's what I do. I just take it to my kitchen and I hold the leaf and I spray the fronts, backs, petioles, everything, uh, just to knock off anything initially. And that will, knock down the population and uh, you'll have less to treat. Um, so that's always the first step, just rinse the plant off. Uh, just a couple things to be mindful of when you're rinsing your plants off is number one, use uh, room temperature water, uh, not too hot, not too cold, you will damage your plant. And the other thing to watch out for is try not to overwater your plant if you can help it. Sometimes I'll do it when my plants already need a watering. Um, if I can, if the timing happens to correspond and then if I, you know, happen to drench the plant, it's not the end of the world, it needed a water anyways. So just a couple things to be mindful of when you're spraying down your plants. Okay, so my go-to method for dealing with thrips is insecticidal soap. Um, so you can buy pre-mixed sprays um, or you can make your own. So you use about a teaspoon of insecticidal soap to about a liter of water. Uh, I'm not sure what that works out into gallons for US folks, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
You want to be sure to spray it directly on the infested leaves. The soap will kill the pest on contact, which is the really great part about using a soap method as opposed to some other treatments. You're going to want to make sure you spray the tops and the bottoms of the leaves, the petioles, um, the stems and the soil itself in case anything falls down into the soil. You want to treat the entire plant. So just spray the crap out of it basically. So insecticidal soap isn't like a systemic so it's not going to get into the tissue of the plant and work ongoing. So that is something that you will need to repeat. I would recommend probably like once a week um, if you still see any outbreaks or anything like that. And I would probably say for the first month um, after you see an initial infestation, treat it once a week. And that way the population can't rebuild itself. And like I said, the thrips live for about a month. So if you're treating once a week for a month, the likelihood is pretty good that you're going to be able to knock the population of that plant out in that time frame. Now, I have never had a problem with this, but if you're worried about um, using soaps or anything like that on your leaves, you can always test it in one spot on the leaf first, uh, maybe on a, a lower leaf or something that's not quite as noticeable. And then, you know, give it a day. If you see any damage, then maybe don't use it. I have used insecticidal soap, um, my own as well as uh, pre-made ones on all of my plants. I've never had a problem on any of them. When you, It's when you get into the oils, if you have like a horticultural oil, uh, those tend to um, negatively impact some plant. They will turn them almost like an opaque. So just be careful when you're dealing with oils. But if you're dealing with soaps, um, unless you're putting way too much soap into your mixture, it won't damage your plant. Um, I have never had a problem with it. Now, you do you. I know some people are like, don't put soap on your plants. It's fine. Honestly, I promise you it will be okay. <laughs> So neem oil is another option that a lot of people tend to lean towards. Now keep in mind that neem oil does not necessarily kill on contact. It's something that's more of, of a preventative measure as opposed to uh, an initial treatment of the plant or the pest. So neem would be handy um, as a prevention because when the pest bites, um, into a plant that's been sprayed with neem and it gets that neem oil in its mouth, that's what's going to kill it. So when you're spraying it onto the pest, it's not ingesting it unless it take, happens to take a bite right away, um, but it doesn't kill on contact, if that makes sense. So use neem oil as a preventative, not necessarily as a treatment for a current outbreak. Sticky traps are another option that you can use. Personally, I didn't find uh, sticky traps a very effective method for thrips. Uh, reason being, yes, they can fly. They don't do it well. I just personally, I didn't find it a really good option. However, um, in tandem used with other preventative uh, or treatment methods, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt. If you are buying sticky traps that are uh, for thrip infestation, thrips are more attracted to blue than they are to the yellow ones that we traditionally use for fungus gnats. And the blue sticky traps can be a little bit more tricky to find. I believe that I have some linked in my Amazon storefront if you wanna check there. Maybe I'll double check, um, but they are a little difficult to find. I know the ones that I had initially found, they don't sell on Amazon anymore, uh, but if you can find them, I mean, use them in tandem with other uh, options as well. Like I said, it can't hurt. Okay, so now that you've eradicated your thrips population, how do you stop them from coming back? You've done all that work. The last thing you wanna do is have to do it all over again. Well, that's on you. <laughs> now you have to decide how badly you don't want them to return. <laughs> So step number one is to be diligent. Um, I have said this for a long time. It's something I really swear by. When I'm going around watering my plants, which we inevitably have to do once a week, once every week and a half or so, when you water a plant, set your watering can down or whatever, inspect the leaves, inspect the petioles, look for any damage, look for any creepy crawlies. Um, you're already at the plant anyway. It takes you a couple extra seconds and that way you're constantly checking your plants and potentially nipping a problem in the bud before it becomes like an outbreak. 
Uh, like I said before, you want to check anything that comes into the house, whether it's a new house plant, uh, fruits and veggies from the garden, cut flower arrangements, even flowers that you get from like a florist or something, I'd be a little iffy about. Just keep them away from any other uh, house plant or keep them away from your house plants in general. Um, you can also use um, beneficial insects to as a preventative, they tend to feed more on the eggs um, as far as predatory mites are concerned um, or the nymphs or larvae uh, of pest populations. Um, but things like ladybugs, uh, green lacewings, uh, those things will feed on the actual bugs them or the pests themselves. I have used two rounds of predatory mites. Here's the ones that I use. I'm struggling. I'm struggling with the predatory mites right now. I think it's a situation where I need to continue to use them ongoing and refresh the little packets every like six to eight weeks or so. Um, I've had these little packets on my plants now since before Christmas um, and I am still seeing thrips on plants. And so I'm wondering, I'm hoping that it's just the fact that I still had adults kicking around and I'm really hoping that that's the scenario and not that these mites are doing nothing. So the jury's still out on that one for me a little bit. Uh, they most definitely cannot hurt. Um, now the ones that I have, uh, we bought them because they were supposed to directly uh, treat or target thrips, but these ones will also um, after I've done some reading, will also attack and eat spider mites. So it's kind of a two for one. So if you get these these guys, I mean, it's, it's definitely not gonna hurt your plant um, and it will definitely knock the population down. So just keep in mind, the one thing about using predatory mites, and this is the one thing that I struggle with, it's that if you introduce predatory mites onto your plants, you then have to not treat that plant with anything else. Because once you treat it with that, then you go and you're like, oh, I see thrips, I wanna wash the plant down and spray it with something. Well, now you're killing the mite population that you paid for and put on your plant. Do you see what I'm saying? So your best option, if you're going to use predatory mites, do all of the pre-treatment first, use your insecticidal soap and all that stuff and then use the predatory mites as uh, like a, a few days to a week later as more of a preventative. It's definitely not something that if you have a massive outbreak that you wanna go, oh, here's a bunch of predatory mites and that's all. You need to use a lot of these different techniques in tandem. I'm flinging my hands around a lot. Put the pen down, okay. <laughs> So I think that's pretty much it for this video. I hope I didn't ramble on too much. Um, I do want to go over a couple uh, quick questions that I did have. A lot of them uh, were the same. The one comment that I got the most was, why are they so terrible? Um, probably because they're difficult to see and you really, really have to be diligent in checking your plants. Uh, and like I said before, the bigger collection that you have, the more difficult that is. I mean, we all have so many hours in a day to do all of the things that we have to do and need to do, um, you know, and when you have a collection of like even over a hundred plants, that's a lot of time and effort and work if you're going to go ahead and treat all your plants. So don't kill yourself over it. If you know, you find a pest on your plant, it's not the end of the world. Um, like I said before, unless your plant is weak or it's uh, really, really tiny, like a little seedling or something like that, the plant will take it. It's just ugly. It just, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, another question that I got was, do they like certain plants over others? Like I said, they're not really particular. They'll pretty much eat any food that's put in front of them, you know. So they're like your husband, <laughs> pretty much, as long as they don't have to cook it, right? Um, are they harmful to humans? Do they bite? Uh, they're not harmful to humans. They actually will bite. Will you notice it? Probably not. Um, it's not something that they will seek out. <laughs> it's not like, you know, they're hunting for you or anything like that. You probably wouldn't even notice if you did get bit by one. Their mouths are so incredibly small that it's, it's not a big deal. Um, and do they fly? I covered that. Um, they do, but not well. So they tend to not. 
Okay, I think that was pretty much all the questions that I had. Most of the questions were, um, you know, things that I basically already covered. What kind of damage do they cause? Do they like certain house plants? How do you get rid of them? <laughs> you know, those kinds of questions. So I hope I answered everything that you wanted to know. Um, keep in mind, it is possible to completely eradicate your population. It's just about how much time and effort you're willing to put into it. And don't beat yourself up over it if you get a pest on your plant regardless of what pest it is um, it happens to us all it's not the end of the world just remember to breathe and then just deal with it <laughs> uh, if I missed anything please go ahead and throw it down in the comments um, I tried to cover as much as possible um, and I think I think I pretty much I think I got it I think I got it. Uh, but if there's anything additional, please go ahead and throw it down there. I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have on thrips. So I will go ahead and wrap this up before I ramble on even further because I'm feeling pretty rambly today. I would like to thank all of you so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help to my channel and I personally do really appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's about it. So I would like all of you to have an amazing and wonderful day, night, week, month, and year. I love you all to bitty bits, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah!